chapter 13, Herbie's Scout Hike. This is a story that is probably the most famous story that comes out of the goal. It starts here in chapter 13. It continues and is resolved in chapter 15. Uh, Davy or David Rogo, Alex's son, uh, wakes his dad up, says, Dad, you volunteered to take me on the scout hike. Uh, and thus tees up a, a camp out, an overnight adventure, and this famous scout hike, which does probably more to help the world understand the theory of constraints than anything else that Goldrod did as an author or as a consultant, to the point that the phrase or the word Herbie is used as a synonym for the word constraint in manufacturing sites all over the world. Um, so uh, we already saw in chapter 12 that uh, Julie was laying into Alex about not being a good father and that he's not present for his kids. He wakes up, uh, his son is excited about the scout hike. They get there and the other adults are not there. So now all of a sudden, uh, Alex Rogo, our narrator, is the one responsible for this hike. Um, and on the hike, there is, uh, and, and Goldrot says it very clearly, again, showing us that uh, the 1984, when the book is published, is a, is a different time. He just says, I got this fat kid on the hike, and the fat kid is Herbie, and Herbie's taken forever. The fat kid is slowing down the whole troop um, as they try and walk, uh, you know, single file on a trail. Um, it's hard for them to maintain any kind of cadence, and, and Rogo... Again, with Goldratt using the Socratic method, we see him attempt every variety of how to organize the troop as they're on this trail. Does he go last? Uh, does the fastest kid go first? Does the slowest kid go first? How do they how do they do it? And we'll see that this gets them to the drum and buffer system that we'll talk about later and that a lot of us use in manufacturing today. Uh, my favorite quote from the chapter is the positive encouragement from David Rogo, his son. He said, you're doing great, Dad. Um, so if we think of what's going on here, we're really teaching two of the central components of theory of constraints. The first is that localized optima doesn't matter, right? So the localized optima here is you can have one kid can complete the hike real fast. It doesn't matter, right? It does, what matters is what's the troops time to complete the task, which is the hike. So uh, that is the overarching goal and the localized goal of individualized uh, scouts finishing really doesn't matter. The second concept is, you know, why is it so hard to predict the completion time? And that's because you've got dependent events. So we, each scout must finish the trip based on the completion time of the scout in front of them because the trail is single file. And second, we've got statistical fluctuations. So each of those scouts has a different walking pace and thus a different predicted walking time. Uh, can't say enough great things about this chapter. If you're gonna only read two chapters here, I would read this one and chapter 15, uh, which I'll cover in two uh, more episodes. So on a page by page basis, you know, on page 94, one of the boys looks at uh, Rogo and says, oh, our, our troop master couldn't make it. Uh, so anyone who's ever volunteered with the Scouts BSA knows that the acronym is not just Boy Scouts of America, but also many times Babysitters of America. Um, again, I love that we look at Herbie on page 96 and Goldrat just writes, as Rogo asks him his name, he says, Herbie, says the fat kid. Um, well, on page 97, we've got Rogo yelling at them, hey, let's go up there. Let's close the ranks. I yell, double time, double time. It's like somebody yelling at a process step in manufacturing. You can yell all you want. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go any faster. Um, we've got page 99, the example of Ron is the fast kid. So Ron is the anti-Herbie, the kid who goes too fast through the operation. Um, and then page 100, we start to see Rogo's eyes opening when he says, what's happening isn't an averaging out of the fluctuations in our various speeds, but an accumulation of the fluctuations. And he closes with, and that would have to be our throughput, not the rate at which Ron walks the trail, but the rate at which I, Alex Rogo, does because he's put himself at the back of the pack. Again here, Goldrot as author takes a lot of risk with putting personal components into the book. But by doing that, you get the genius of this story. And it's actually pretty similar to Kurt Vonnegut putting in the bombing of Dresden and Slaughterhouse-Five, right? It's how do you put in this personal story that tells the broader point you're pursuing?